Hi, and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So the YouTube video that's titled How to Train Your Cardiovascular Fitness, Peter Atia, that was produced by the YouTube channel Peter Atia MD, is 13 minutes and one second in duration. Let's break it down and let's just look at the key points. And please remember, now I've semi-retired, I get to watch between 20 and 30 longevity type videos most days, as well as reading the articles and scientific studies and listening to podcasts when I exercise. And I only review the videos like this one that I think are gonna give real longevity value. So although it's a critique of his original content, it is most certainly not a negative criticism. Peter Atia starts by addressing what he calls the training balance. Here he emphasizes the 80-20 rule for that particular balance, suggesting that 80% of the training should be at low intensity, that's our zone two, while 20% should be at high intensity, and that's our VO2 max. He says this approach is effective for both regular individuals like myself and also elite athletes. He then moves on to what he calls the training pyramid. The base of the pyramid consists of zone two training, which helps to build a strong aerobic foundation. The peak represents VO2 max training, which boosts the maximum oxygen uptake. The goal here, he says, is to maximize the overall area of the pyramid for optimal cardiorespiratory fitness. He then shares his personal training regimen, which includes four to five hours of dedicated cardio per week. He splits his workouts into four sessions, mainly focusing on zone two training with periodic VO2 max sessions. His routine is adapted to fit within his busy schedule, ensuring consistency without compromising other commitments. Zone two training is defined as low intensity exercise that maximizes mitochondrial efficiency. Zone two training should be done for at least 30 to 45 minutes per session, at least four times a week exercises like cycling, treadmill, swimming, rowing, and also stair climbing. This steady state nature of zone true helps to maintain aerobic efficiency and also endurance. He then moves on to VO2 max training. This high intensity training can be performed using various methods such as air bikes, regular bikes, stair climbers, treadmills, and also running. Peter typically follows a four minute on, four minute off protocol, ensuring that high intensity effort is balanced with adequate recovery. Peter then talks about practical considerations. He says it's important to spread the workouts out throughout the week and also to maintain consistency. This approach helps harness mitochondrial efficiency and push oxidative phosphorylation to its limits without over-relying on glycolysis. Now, due to his busy schedule, Peter has had to adjust his training to fit within his work schedule constraints. He focuses on maintaining fitness levels while balancing other life commitments, demonstrating that you need flexibility and adaptability for long-term fitness maintenance. So if you follow my channel, you'll know I do two major cardio sessions per week. After watching this video, I think I'm gonna have to up that. On Saturdays, I ride my bike for about an hour and five or 10 minutes, and the vast majority of that session is in zone two. And I ruck run on Tuesday. That normally lasts between 40 and 50 minutes, where I'm nearly always in zone two. And depending on which fitness tracker that I'm looking at, I sometimes get into the VO2 max also. This used to consist of me running and then breaking into a walk and then walking until I got my breath fully back before I started to run again. But as the weeks have gone on, I've now found it easier to run a little longer and a little harder and then to take a shorter break before I start running again. Let me know in the comments below what cardio exercises you do to maintain your cardiovascular fitness. Now, cardiovascular fitness is seen as a key mortality marker. 